Hello there friends and welcome back to my channel. It's Amy McGrew here and I am going to make a one page layout with you featuring the special that Close to My Heart is having this month. It's the Dream Maker. Last week I did share with you this special. Today we're going to be using some of the pattern papers from this collection as well as the stamp set. The stamp set is really unique in the fact that it's a two carrier sheet stamp set. Today we're gonna to be working with some of the flowers and the background <clears throat> stamps. And then also in this collection, you get a stencil. It's got four um, different patterns on one stencil sheet. And what I did is I cut them into four six by six squares. Um, and this special also has an amazing sticker sheet. I'm in love with the gold foil stickers. And it even comes with some black paperboard die cuts. So we are going to get started on a one page layout now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is some stamping. <clears throat> and I'm going to take this large flower from the stamp set. What's fun about stamping is you can color in with all different kinds of mediums. I am going to turn my versamat over to the foam side to give myself some extra cushion. And these are outline stamps, which means <clears throat> there's lots to color in. And you can use the tri-blend markers, you can use colored pencils, um, all different kinds of things. And what we are going to do today is actually use stamps to color in. So I'm just stamping a handful of the large flowers and then we'll clean the stamp off with our stamp chamois and stamp some of those small flowers. I definitely need to clean my blocks just have so much fun creating I don't take time to clean the blocks because those aren't as much fun all right so we've got a handful of our flowers and now this is a really fun way to color add color to our flowers I'm going to put this image back on my carrier sheet and then I'm going to take this image right here it's kind of like a watercolor blob if you will and we'll put it on our <clears throat> block we'll start with Sundance and I'm going to pull in a scrap piece of paper <clears throat> because we're going to do what we call generation stamping so I'm gonna ink my image up. I'm gonna stamp it once on my scrap paper and then I'm stamping right over my image. And that's how I am going to color my flowers. So I'll go ahead and do the rest off camera and be right back. All right, so you can see I stamped a variety of flowers, both big and small, using that technique. Now I'm gonna take this line stamp. I think this is my favorite stamp in this entire collection. And I'm going to stamp over um, the flowers just to give them a little bit of texture. I'm not even gonna put this stamp on a block. I'm just gonna ink it up with my fingers and then just stamp right over the flower. So hopefully the camera picks up that texture. We'll go ahead and clean this stamp and we'll do one more. And then off camera, I will cut my flowers out. There is not a die cut that goes with this collection, but these images are pretty easy to cut with your micro tip scissors. So let me hold this up for you. And hopefully the camera is picking up that organic color. 
So that stamp just gives it a little bit of um, an extra texture that I think makes it pop. So I'll go ahead and finish this and I'll cut my flowers out and I'll be right back. Okay, so here are my flowers all cut out. I'm gonna put them to the side and some other products that I'm thinking I might use with this layout is um, some of the thin cuts, the layered flowered thin cuts. I did use this leaf right here and I cut a few of these out. And then I used my vellum paper and used the sprigs and leaves and I used that leaf right there. These correspond with flowers so easily and I thought that the vellum might go nice with it. Actually, Jama Malmi um, gave me that idea. So we might do a little bit of that with this collection too. I don't know, we'll play and we'll see how it goes. Um, I do have a piece of the Dream Maker pattern paper here. My base page is going to be a Lagoon cardstock. I'm gonna go ahead and use the dark side. And this is gonna go right on top like this. Now I did have a little inspiration for this layout that I've kind of started to design in my head and we're gonna embellish it together. But I'm going by this layout right here. It is part of the Hello Darling workshop kit in the Close to My Heart idea book. So I saw that and I have two photos that I wanna use and I thought this might be a good design to, to mimic. Um, so we have this pattern paper and it's going to go right on top of the lagoon. But before we do that, I am going to do a little bit of stenciling. So I'm gonna pull in the stencil from the Dream Maker and I'm gonna use this grid one. And I just wanna add a little bit of pattern to this already patterned paper. So I'm gonna take my Lagoon ink pad and my blending brush and I'm gonna use a very light hand with this. Um, and just no rhyme or reason, just kinda add a little bit of pattern and interest to this page. I've been really enjoying the stenciling. Um, with the Dream Maker collection, there are three workshop, uh, workshop kits available on my website. Even if you don't purchase the products, I encourage you to uh, download the free guides because you can use them with any papers and stamps that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of this stenciling down in this corner. I'm not sure if we'll even see any of it, but I have my stencils out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, and then we'll get to building our page. So we will adhere the pattern paper to the center of the base page. And um, I got the inspiration for the stenciling from following the mini album workshop that is part of the Dream Maker collection. That's one of the free guides that is on my website. And I'm having a lot of fun with that six by eight size and just adding subtle stenciling to the pattern paper. You could use those stencils with texture paste, um, ink pads. There's all kinds of fun things to do. So hopefully the camera is picking up that stenciling. So then I'm looking at this picture right here and we need a strip of pattern paper for down at the bottom. So I pulled in this, this pattern paper. I love it because it shows all of the colors. This is the back side of it. Um, and this is why I thought it would be fun to use the flowers and the leaves as well. So when I adhere this, and this is a yep, three by 12 strip of paper, I'm gonna adhere it so that the reds line up with the reds on this stripe pattern and then the purples and whatnot. And I'm gonna put my strip 
about um, an inch up approximately. There we go. And then I am gonna add a black strip to the bottom, just a black card stock, and then a black strip to the top, just to kind of ground that. So we'll adhere that. And then we'll do the top one. I like that. And then I'm gonna pull in my photo. So I have two photos here. Um, my youngest daughter it dances ballet with Ballet Hartford, and every quarter they have what they call visiting artists. And so this artist came and came to their rehearsal and was sketching the dancers. And this picture is actually my daughter and her two roommates and the artist sketched them. So I thought that was pretty unique and I thought it would be fun to um, document this. And my daughter's outfit, her uh, her leotard and her skirt really match the Streammaker collection perfectly. So that is why I chose these colors. I went ahead and cut a piece of Sundance cardstock for a photo mat. And I'm using the light side of the cardstock, as many of you probably already know, close to my heart is a double-sided cardstock. So one side is the true side, and we refer to that as the dark side. The back side is slightly lighter. So I am using the lighter side, and I cut a, a, a quarter of an inch larger photo mat for both the photo of the girls and the photo of the drawing. So I am going to adhere these with adhesive. Sometimes I like to adhere my photos with 3D foam tape, but I am just going to adhere these flat. I asked my daughter if they were able to keep the drawing and she said no, and I thought that was a bummer. But it was kind of special because next year, two of her two roommates won't be coming back. And so this is their, um, you know, their, their last remaining weeks together. And it was kind of nice that they got to have a drawing of them done. All right. So if we look at this, um, the inspiration I'm going by, we can see that the smaller three by four photo is on an angle slightly over the four by six. And then we have kind of like this circle pattern. So I went ahead and cut a half a circle from another pattern from the Dream Maker. And I was thinking that it could go right here like this. And then this could go right here. Now, I really like how that looks, but I kind of was trying to figure out how I could cover this ballet dancer up. And so that's where the flowers are going to come in. So let's get our flowers and our leaves. And I'm just gonna kind of dry fit these to see if the vision I have in my head could work. Now I don't want to cover up Cat because she is one of the stars of the picture. So I'm just randomly placing the flowers. Um, maybe I could go like that. Like that. 
So I don't know, I don't know if I like that. We'll leave this for now and um, add the sprigs. I kind of like the layers of having the vellum in. And then when I go to adhere these, I can adhere some flat and some with 3D foam tape to give it some added dimension. I am gonna try and see how this would look if we just went ahead and followed the, the layout. And then um, the other set that I pulled in was the ballet dancer set. So this does come with ballet uh, stamps as well as thin cuts. And I already stamped and cut out a, a dancer. And I was thinking that maybe she could fit in here. Maybe we'll put the green flower here and put that right there. So this is the vision that I'm going for right now. And then I can do my journaling here and see how that looks. So let me go ahead and get this adhered down and we'll see where we're at. All right, so I added my flowers. I did add one of the leaf thin cuts and the sprig thin cuts there. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna keep it, but for now, I like it. And then right here, I took our um, journaling strip stickers and I matted them on some periwinkle cardstock on the light side so I can do my journaling there. That way the journaling will pop up and I'll use my black Le Pen to do the journaling. And then I'm thinking of putting my ballerina right here like this so her foot is grounded on that black. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of color to her, um, I thought I would use some of my watercolored pencils. So I pulled in a few colors and I'm just gonna color the top of her with this colored pencil and I'm coloring lightly. And I thought this would bring in that lagoon color and I'm going to use these as regular colored pencils. I'm not even going to use water to uh, blend them in. I'm going to just add a little bit of a skin tone to her arms and her face. To a little bit of her leg. And I'm going ever so lightly. And then maybe I'll use my turquoise again. Um, well, let's see, how does that look? Um, maybe I'll just add some definition to the pleats of her skirt. And I could even Yeah, I like that. Let me pull in my pink. I have a pink pencil. <coughs> and if I do this really lightly, because I don't want it to be super dark, and just add a little bit of pink to her point shoe. And we'll do right here. And we can stick her right there like that. And then, okay, so let's go ahead and adhere her. Right here. And when I 
when I adhered the flowers, Some of them are on 3D foam tape and some are flat. I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up. I did want to add a little bit of brown to the ballerina's hair. And a tip I learned from close to my heart when you're using colored pencils is you really want to have a, um, a blunt edge. You don't want it to be sharp. And what they teach us is to kind of um, wear them down by just scribbling like that. So a nice blunt tip is what you want as opposed to a pointed tip, which you'd think it would be the exact opposite, but I can see how that makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm liking that. Now we need to come back to the whole issue with these leaves and sprigs. So, you know, I just had an idea of maybe putting this under like this and I cut the, the leaves on the light side and the dark side. I used the light side up here so I think I'm going to stick with the light side down here and what if we stuck some lagoon leaves and some vellum sprigs right here to kind of make it look like it's one continuous thing. I think I, I think I like that. Yeah, I think I like that. All right, so I'll go ahead and get that adhered and I'll add my journaling and I'll be back to show you the finished layout. I wanted to show you that because this is vellum, I don't want to put adhesive where you will see it because it shines through the vellum. So I just put a little bit of adhesive on the stem and I'm sticking this underneath the photo and then I'll take my lagoon leaves and put them part of them right over the vellum. So that will keep the vellum stuck down. So we'll see, hopefully you can see that and you can see it up in that corner. So I am liking that. I feel like it needs a little bit more. You can see my stenciling up here. You can't see it down here. I was afraid of that, but that's okay. I like it here. I think what I'm gonna do is take the ballet stamp and there is a um, a few sentiments here um, life is better when you dance maybe that will I could fit that right there like that and then they do have this image with the stars, I could randomly stamp or I could do some splattering, some black splattering with my shimmer brush. Let's go ahead and stamp this image and I'll use my archival black. I'm gonna stamp it once on a piece of scrap paper because it's a little nerve wracking stamping right on a layout when you've got all your embellishments on it. But this fits right in the corner. Yes, I like that. Um, so we've got that and I'll do my journaling and I don't know if I should do anything else. Um, let me do my journaling and I'll be right back and we'll see how we're gonna finish this up. Okay, my journaling is done. And then I remembered we've got our sticker sheet. So rather than adding some black, I think I'll add some gold foil. And I'm gonna take my anti-static pouch and just, um, take the sticky off my stickers and kind of audition them in different places. So there's a, a kind of a big place spot here. I could stick that. And then this little butterfly, maybe put 
here so it kind of brings out the stenciling and then I like the rule of three so I'll get one of the gold hearts and maybe stick this right there so looking at this I think I like it like this and I'm going to leave it like this um, let me add some adhesive to my stickers and then we will call this layout done and I think this is the first layout that I've done where I've had my journaling done with the layout. So there's a first time for everything. I am slowly learning. Um, so let's see, what do you think? I think I really like this. So we use the Dream Maker pattern paper. We use the Dream Maker stamp set. We used the ballet stamp set. Oh, and we use the Dream Maker stencil and the Dream Maker stickers. And um, I am very pleased with the way that came out. Oh, and also can't forget those uh, thin cuts. I will list everything I used in the description, the layered flowered thin cuts. We use this leaf and then the sprigs and leaves, and I use that with the vellum paper. Um, I really like this way of coloring. That technique is taught in the 12 by 12 scrapbooking workshop, which is a free downloadable guide on my website right now. Uh, super simple and fast and easy, and I think the final the final product is really makes it look like it you spent a lot of time on it. So there you have it, my dream maker page. If you liked this video and would give it a thumbs up, that helps me to grow and um, like this video and share it. That tells YouTube that you're watching my videos. And again, I appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.